Oh, oh, oh yeah. Let's play something spicy today, chat. How's everyone doing? It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday and we are halfway through the week. How are you fine folks doing? Welcome to the stream. We play magic, red prison magic typically, modern magic most definitely. <clears throat> I have an idea. We're starting late, we're gonna have a little... Deck tech's not the right word. We're gonna have a little viewer selection here. I have the 60, I'm pretty happy with the 60, we're gonna go with the 60. But we're going to be playing with some swords. Meerkat, what's up? Camber, Cam MTG, whatever you want to be called in Uncle DB, what you guys doing? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for tuning in. We are starting a bit late, but that's okay because we're going to play something magical today. Something magical. Let's reset that. That stuff's good. Bam. Let's get this up. Here is the almost completed list, but we have a few things from viewer input that we're going to get going here. <clears throat> Let's talk about the main board and then we'll talk about those spicy things that were off to the side now. Main board is going to have slag storms and abrades in here. We're going to have the blood moons and all of that. We're going to actually bring in an extra, extra goblin. Four, four, and one. Bringing in hazard and dropping two Chandras. Now this seems a little bit scary. It is. But that's okay. Because we are going to do something a little bit wild and crazy here. It's a kind of magic. Russ tried some swords out and had some pretty bad luck. Well, we're not Russ, and Russ did not have the power of the wolf pack, the slime balls, you guys. I have 18 cards in my sideboard. I'm actually going to cut Lattice. Now I'm gonna cut Lattice because what if Lattice were to be banned? We don't want to get so tied in on how good this card is. Goodbye. All right, we're down to 17. The idea is I could cut these Chandras. Now, this is where you guys come in. I can cut two Chandras and we'll be at 15, or you can tell me which swords to cut and I will cut. I will cut a sword, two swords. I need two cards cut. I'm thinking of keeping my swords, but you could cut two cards here. We have the 12 here and we have five here. Pick two cards to cut. That's how you guys are going to influence this game. And don't worry, we're not going to fool around with that friendly stuff. We're going full competitive. Karn is going to be literally a tutor for liquid metal coating if we get them out super early. Or if we have creatures on board, we're going and grabbing a sword. So I don't like body and mind. I can't see where it would be useful. And I'm happy to read through these. A lot of people do understand the swords. The best way to kind of look at them is their coloring tells you what they have protection from. And then there's usually kind of a ranking amongst the community. Keep that in mind. Body of Mind is a wolf token generator. It has protection from blue and green. Green doesn't probably have too much effect unless we're against, say, Jund, for example. <clears throat> Tarmogoyf and you mill top 10. Now this one's a bit interesting because you can mill your opponent into some great stuff with dredge. You could also mill them past a lot of cards after two hits. We can cut body of mind though. That would be one. So we'll put body of mind over here. That's on the chopping block. What else? Do I cut a Chandra? Do I need to keep Chandra in case we need to bring her in? Am I cutting another one here? The general gist is this one does some damage and draws cards, which is pretty decent. This one is black green, which is pretty good protection from a lot of things we struggle with. And it does untapping and discarding lands. The untapping probably doesn't help us too much, but maybe discarding for our opponent. Light and shadow is black white protection, and it's a bit of life gain type of things. Um, it does actually uh, return things that are a little bit, not reanimation, but bring stuff from the graveyard as well. So life gain, the life and uh, the white and the black for the reanimation. And then this one's a little bit harder to just know what it does because of the coloring, but it's red, white flames and, and a white blade here. And this one uh, deals damage based on their hand size and you gain line. So sort of light and shadow is kind of a weird mix between war and peace. Do we have one more cut here, chat? We're gonna ditch sort of body and mind. And Nightbot doesn't get a vote here. What is our last cut? And then we're, we're getting into the league. 
And remember, Karn is going to get liquid metal coating if we ramp him out. It could get bridge just in case, but it's as long as there's a creature on the field, I'm going to get sort of sort of something. Sword of War and Peace is kind of messed, so we'll have a black, white, a green, black, and a red, blue protection. War and Peace has the best protections. Let's bring it back. Bringing it back. Black, white, path, fatal push, abrupt decay. <clears throat> if you're wondering, protections. Teferi, Celestial Purge. Path, bolt. Right, it's red, so bolt, not fatal push, my bad. Abrupt decay and, and fatal push would be sort of light and shadow. <clears throat> Correct, white. White and red. This is this one always confuses me. I always feel like it's white and another black. But doesn't Chalice shut those off? That is a true statement. That is a true statement. We could always get sort of light and shadow to get through our white opponents. You could always cut a Chandra or a Storm Breath or an Anger or an Eidolon. You guys have these 12 cards also. We could keep all four swords and pick based on matchup. I'll give you guys another minute here and then I'm going to make the choice for you. Just kidding. Or am I? We have kind of a vote for Sword of War and Peace, it sounds like. Remember, this doesn't protect from Liliana. Nothing protects from Liliana. Liliana is a jerk. Light and Shadow is lame. You like reverse of the control jacks. All right. You guys okay with these two? Body and mind and light and shadow out? This would be great against a black white deck, although we're usually pretty decent against them. And this one we're kind of determining doesn't have enough effects. Another reason for this one to not work as much is the reanimation. Maybe we don't need it. Rival Master Protection Lily. These two are cut. Body and mind too slow. All these swords are going to be a little slow. All right, we're going to do it with these three swords, chat. This is what we're running. Here we go. Real quick, chat. Evaros. Evaros. Haven't checked him out. Go check him out. He's an interesting guy. Oh my gosh, I'm out of stuff. Hold on, chat. Hold on. Be ready. Ran out of product chat. I gotta trade. I have to trade away or trade. Add these chests. Chat amongst yourself, chat. I'm gonna go get some tickets. I'm gonna get. You know what, chat? Let's not go get tickets. Let's just open some chests. Let's open chests until we get enough play points. How about that? How about that? <laughs> How many do we need? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to even check, chat. All right. We're going to just open until we have 120. Chess have good EV right now? All right. Let's find out. Boom. Five play points. Let me get notepad up here. We're going to just open until we have 120 play points. So five of 120. We're on our way. Umbra Mystic and this dude. Mm -hmm. Boom. Open another one. We're up to 10. We're up to 10. Mizium Tank and Herald of Anafenza. Look at this tank, by the way. Dude, I would not I would not want to be hit by this thing. This thing is going to just crush you. Giant. All right, all right. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. We're going to 120 points. Five more points. We're doing it, chat. We're, we're really doing it. Sharding of Sphinx. That's pretty cool art. Look at these little orbs. Dude, I'm down with that. Mm -hmm. Viridian Zealot? Mm -hmm. Nah. Let's go again. Let's go again. 25. There we go. That will go to 30, and then we have 40. So we're 4120. Sacred Ground. Whenever a spell or ability an opponent controls causes land to be put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card. Mm -hmm. Escape Shift. Let's keep going. We're almost there. 45. Woo! 
brings us to 85 total and a bounty agent destroying those legendary permanents let's open another one we're almost there to our 120 brian thank you for the bits we do have that ojitai list coming up at some point i have to find out when you'll be here 90 of 120 we're almost there to 120 i don't know how many chests we've opened but it's okay 20 Mosswort bridge that takes us to 110. Looks like we'll have one to two more chests to open. Then we'll be there. Then we'll be there. Five, Soul of Ravnica and Predator Dragon. By the way, I haven't opened really anything crazy here. Oh, 45. And Tendo Ice Bridge. All right. We did it. We got our play points. Let's play some magic. We're done. We're done there. Blitzing through some chests just to open so we can play a league. So we can entertain you fine folks. Here on Modern Pyro Prison Wednesday Fluffy Stream. Stoked. I think I'll be streaming Friday. Are you around Friday? Do you have a list? I need a list. You need to at me in like Discord for a list. I'm not a blue-white player. I need some help. All right. We won the die roll. Let's play some magic here. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. Turn one, uh, turn one, uh, zoomies. Turn one zoomies. And I get a scry out of it, too. Not bad. Opponent's down to five cards. Keeps the hand. Let's get him with some zoomies, Chad. My opponent wishes me good luck, have fun. I'm gonna put this blood moon on top. It may not be very good, but they're gonna be panicking about war boss here. And then I'll get that Blood Moon down. Seems good. Fluffy, are you ready for Citadel Siege, Spore, Frog, Crypt, Rat, Value Town? Only one of those interested me. Ooh, I'm liking my Blood Moon right now. My opponent is going to panic. By the way, we have black mana now. We are a red-black deck. Do you have a list? That is the question. That or do you have a preferred list or... Oh gosh, oh gosh, you have like 25. Oh my gosh. All right, Urborg. Urborgen. Morgan Schmorgan. Oh gosh. Uh, I don't need to slam Moon Chat. I'm just going to slam more Rabble Master. Oh, HLG. Thank you so much for the sub, the Twitch Prime. Welcome. Come a slime ball. Come a slime ball. Welcome, my friend. My opponent not having Snapcaster. I'm not sure what deck plays Urborg, Island, Nile, Spellbomb. I'm a little bit afraid, having played my Rabble Master, to run into Bantu. But if they don't play Bantu, we're good. That was probably my opponent's out. Oh, yeah. And real quick, you get these three sweet emotes. Getting us actually closer to unlocking a fourth emote, I believe. Yes, I need, let me refresh that. Affiliates get so many emotes. I need f six more people in the month to get that next affiliate spot sub emote open to give you guys some more stuff for your Twitch Prime subs. The Karn Flex. Bradley, we good, we good. All right, we're playing against Black Blue requires much black because of Urborg. Okay. I don't bring the swords in because swords are fetched by Karn. Karn is the blacksmith. That being said, I like Hazret. I'm questioning Slagstorm a little bit. Questioning, oh my gosh, it's Marin Karn, Marin Tron. Yeah, affiliates get up to five emotes. I kind of want to bring these Eidolons in. I kind of want these Abrades still. I think Chalice on one still might be good. Let's take the Slagstorms out and just bring in two Chandras here in this matchup. Unknown really what my opponent's doing. They don't care about their graveyard necessarily because they have Spellbomb. Although Spellbomb does not hit both sides. Dude, there's an activity feed here on Twitch. I just refreshed the page. I've never seen that before. Me Karn flexing on the haters. 
All right, we have a turn one Rabble Master into potentially a turn two Rabble Master, and we'll keep this. I am going to get rid of this Abrade. I think Chalice is stronger in this matchup. Unknown what my opponent's still doing, though. Urborg's a sweet card, though. I'd like to spike a land here in the top two. Might be getting Inquisitioned. Possibly a reason to go ahead and Chalice on one. We could also be just slamming in with one of these cool Rabble Master effects. They take my ritual. How rude. How rude. How absolutely rude. We're going to play Rabble Master here. If he gets smacked around, he gets smacked around. That's okay. My opponent did not care about the Chalice, so I don't think they have perhaps a Fatal Push. Or they're planning to do something here to take my Chalice. We'll see. We'll see what my opponent has. Basic Island. Not too worried about that card. <clears throat> land here would be sweet. No land. I guess I'll go ahead and jam out a Chalice on one. Do I play around the Snapcaster? My opponent didn't have it last time. Oh, I don't need to now, chat? I don't need to now. And by the way, cycling for one, you would be completely fine with the Chalice. We're good. Let's go. Jam in. By the way, this Blood Moon is looking bad. <clears throat> now that I've refreshed the page, everything's out of order. Uh-oh. Whoa. Whoa now, opponent. You need to slow your roll over there, opponent. Slow that roll. Getting those Grixis colors on. By the way, I do appreciate the Urza Saga lands here. They're pretty, uh, pretty sweet. I always kind of, I always kind of admired how deep into the color that these lands were. The swamps are black. Mountains have very little, like, like ours have white in them. They're sn snowy looking. Some green sometimes are in mountains. No, these these are like the the dusk. What the? All right, making me discard my blood moon. It's kind of like this haze of doom. Gonna hit for three here. Gonna take my opponent to nine. It does appear to be Grix's control. I like uh, how we've kind of sideboarded. Uh, Eidolons would be better to have at this point, but. Can't have everything. Now spell bomb is countered. No draw for you, opponent. We will be slamming in here with everything. War boss is gonna help out something. Oh yeah, we're gonna slam in. Slam a jam in. In we go. In we go, we make a 2-2 as well. And we're presenting lethal. Sounds good. What do you got for me, opponent? They are at two. Chandra off the top is lethal. A lot of things are lethal. Pudding? Pudding? What are you doing, Pudding? This is a good start. Feels good, feels strong. Goblins are blessing us tonight. Let's bring glory to red, chat. Bruce Bio, how you doing? We need to have a meeting, man. Oh man, this, this opponent's real, real nice. Give me the good luck, give me the GG's. And you know what I did, chat? I was a jerk. Dude, if you if you wander into Jack Hardy, Heart Heart Tree, man, give the, this guy give this guy good luck, man. This uh this opponent's uh jamming sauce awesome. A Bruce by meeting, Bruce by coordinating those meetings with Evan and the MDHs. MDHs is this thing. <clears throat> consider it, Chad. Consider it. Many of you already uh, follow all of us. But if you don't, consider it. It's not a bad investment. All right, we're gonna just keep this. I kind of barely looked at the hand, but I saw a void, I saw a land, I saw a Simeon Spirit Guide. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Jet. Dredge. Oh, snap. It's a Vengevine. Oh, all right. We can put this land on top. Mm -hmm. 
Vengevine's really annoying here. So if I wait a turn, all right, so we're gonna draw land. I wait a turn. Draw land. Then I could play land this and this and this. I'll have four cards. Vengevine's still too big. So I need the extra turn anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and exile and put Chalice on one here. Although we could be seeing like a couple Burning Tree Emissaries. We don't get below four here by doing the land plus something. And we're not really gonna do that anyway this turn. <laughs> keeping the Simeon Spirit Guide gets me below four in two turns. Not keeping it gets me below it in probably three turns. I'm kind of doing this in the hopes that maybe we don't just die here. Apparently a Blood Moon might be good. There's spell one. Bridge will win us this game if we can get it down fast enough. We're gonna use the Scry land here and see what's going on. The idea here is to look for like a ritual or land. Kranko's not. We'll bottom Kranko. We're probably in trouble, though. One thing we can do here is war boss next turn and block one of these. I have a feeling they're probably all in on this. <clears throat> so we're going to need war boss here, and then we're going to need a little bit of a prayer. All right. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and rabble master. So I get one block here. That's not enough. <clears throat> I'm at four. I thought it was higher than four. That's all right. I, I will draw one card to see if we would have gotten there. The scary thing is that if I didn't put Chalice on one and we were trying to ritual out to this bridge, we'd still be facing down some other creatures here. Does not look like I was going to get there. All right. This matchup. I haven't played this one in a while. All right. Angers are going to come in. Corp Orb's gonna come in. Karn is gonna be pitched here. We actually, so I've lost this matchup in very strange ways where you don't get the bridge fast enough and it really, really, really sucks. So we're gonna try to minimize that problem from happening. All right, Blood Moon is actually reasonably good in this matchup. Chalice mm -hmm. is also very good. In this matchup, if I recall, they typically have about 30, 28 to 32 one drops, I believe. A lot of zero drops as well with things like Hangerback and Walking Ballista. We don't have any graveyard interaction. That's okay here. I'm all right with that. We want to leave in all of our braids and Desperate Rituals and Pyretic Rituals because we're probably going to have to sweep the board. We have Slangers, sl Slangers, Slagstorms and Angers as well. Karn's going to be ditched here. I don't want to be doing Karn on turn four and not have emptying the hand. This matchup we will also aggressively mull and we will be looking also to put Chalice probably on two quickly to avoid a beautiful and frustrating <clears throat> um, pretty good hand. Uh, beautiful and frustrating. What, what was I on? It's not important. It's not important. We're going to keep this hand. Mulling, ag oh, mulling aggressively is not bad because you can get the bridge going. Uh, we're going to put this on top. We're going to go ahead and ritual out this Chalice on one here. Uh, starters. I'm probably going to consider getting Blood Moon next, then Torp Orb, then Bridge. We probably have that amount of time here. I could also just Torp Orb here. Let's go ahead and Torp Orb since they have the ability to go get black, and I'll wait on this moon. I don't want to signal necessarily that I have uh, a Blood Moon here. They may just go get Basic Swamp. They don't. Okay. They take their turn, Abrupt Decay, and an Assassin's Trophy in this. That's fine. I'll, I'll Blood Moon behind this, and then we'll look to put our bridge down. It should be in a good spot. All right, Blood Ghast. Uh, we're not going to really stop Blood Ghast as much. For one turn, I don't mind doing this. I actually don't mind holding one land as well. This should turn my opponent off pretty handily on what they can cast. Chalice one and this. 
Walking mm -hmm. Ballista is kind of annoying. Let's see here. Let's see here, I'm at this already, so I can actually go ahead and Desperate Ritual and play this out. We already have enough mana to do everything, so at this point I just want to stop any bleeding here. Any a, a braid will obviously hit Walking Ballista here. If they find their fourth land, it's 18 turns away from them killing, so we're good. By the way, this is Sliver Queen. This is a pretty cool avatar for my opponent. I'm just going to fire this off, destroy artifacts. I don't need to hold it. I don't want to be attacked. They can ping me for one. It's all fine. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. All right. We're in a good spot here. Uh, I think I want a Chalice on two. It's maybe the last thing I, I truly, truly desire here. We'll play basically everything just so I don't get up on cards for this bridge. This one's a bit of an awkward one. Whenever non token is put in the graveyard, whenever creatures put into your opponent's graveyard, how do I get this? Bridges, non token, whenever, yeah. Destroy each creature. This gets rid of. So I have to put. I have to put one of my own things in there. Whatever. I just need to fire that off anyway. I need a Chalice on two. I don't really have a choice. Having another bridge is really good here. Ain't artifacts. It has to be my own creature that goes to the bin. Yeah. Greater Gargadon here. Still has to kill my bridges to get through. It can't do it off an ETB creature. It has to be a Braid or Ancient Grudge. Looking for Chalice. No Chalices in the sideboard. Which is fine. I don't have Karn, so... Maybe the worst thing to see here would be a Shattering Spree. Let's destroy this creature. Destroyed! That doesn't trigger a bridge from below. Nice. Alright. Now if we lose this at any point, we can get rid of the bridges from below. Which is kind of nice. Faithless Looting, countered. Nice. All right. I think we're okay. If they have something at three or four, um, then they do. But this one usually plays, usually Ancient Grudge is usually what they're playing. By the way, you're seeing all these one drops. This one's gonna have a little less on the one drops because they have Bridge from Below, something that's not always in the list. And they have the Greater Gargadon. But a lot of one drops here, a lot of one drops. Chalice one's pretty good. Eidolon's definitely not where I want to be. I could I could entertain a Hazard. I could entertain a Hazard maybe over one of my Rabble Master effects, but also Rabble Master effects are the way that I'm blocking. Trying to decide if that's worth it or if I just go for the Chandra plan. Going the Chandra plan only does put us at a little bit risk. Let's cut. Let's cut a Rabble Master and let's bring in one Karn. So one Karn will give us access to our sideboard where we have the swords and we have liquid metal coating. Although we may have a chalice already on two, if we don't, I can use liquid metal coating to strip them of their lands so that that's like a pseudo fifth chalice, sort of, sort of. Keep in mind that mulliganing against this uh, deck is actually a good idea. All right, blood moon's okay. I don't have a bridge here. I do have a, I do have this. Hmm. They mulled as well. They did keep their six. I'm thinking it's a reasonable six here. Let's keep this. It is lacking bridge. I like this chalice on one a lot though. Let's bottom this land because I'm going to get another scry and the draw. They could set us up for quite a bit here though. And that is that is worrisome off of, say, a Faithless Looting here. 
It just straight thought sees me. Okay. I guess I'm kind of okay with this. That means they have four cards left in the hand. I think they take Chalice here. Blood Moon could be a problem too, though. That's a good top deck. All right, I'm going to put the Simeon Spirit on top now. <clears throat> if they do some crazy stuff here, then I'm going to be playing Bridge. If they don't do too much crazy here, then I will try to do Chalice on one, then Bridges. I could also wait on the Chalice and see if I can just put it all the way to two. Uh, we're going to wait and put it all the way to two. Kind of wait and put it all the way to two. So, Torp Orb, past turn. Gonna do this because there's an Ancient Grudge here. Although they're not on green at the moment, I do not want to find green. And this is also the indication of the card that beats us. And there's the green. Ancient, 04, how you doing? What's up? And I'm okay to take this. That's fine. That's fine. I might just be abrading that. Seems like a fine thing to do here. Land is a great draw as well. So if I just slam the Chalice on two here, then they can continuously tick this up. I think I'm going to have to go one more turn here and hope they don't have another Thought Seize. We're going to play into the risky Thought Seize here. We have three more of both of these cards. I do plan to kill this Walking Ballista. Let's do it at end step. End step seems like a good time to do it. I take an extra damage doing it this way. But I think it's alright. It feels like the right thing to do. Okay, that two drop is out of my hand. This is a fine draw here. We'll go ahead and slam Chalice on two. Obviously, Karn isn't going to be going and getting Liquid Metal. All right, we have to feign a Thought Seize for one more turn here. They're going to Ancient Grudge my Torp Orb. That is fine. No Thought Seize, 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 please, no Thought Seize. Don't have it. Just, just play creatures. Just play creatures. Okay, I'm good with that. You can do that. Faith is looting your heart out. Bridge from below and Vengevine. All right. We good, we good, chat, we good. I think we're good. Land. <laughs> Play bridge here. I'll uh, think about the world here while we decide if we're going to take this two from Bloodgast or not. Something tells me I'm not going to. Something also tells me... It'd be okay. I do have the Goblin Rabble Master. The fear is that I like draw a couple four drops here. Let's see what Stitcher shows. Maybe this will decide it. No, that didn't change my mind. That didn't change my mind either. What else does my opponent have here? Shocks and I'm a little concerned now. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> it is kicked. Everything's going to be zoomy zoomies. Okay, now I'm gonna exile. I'm good. Good job, opponent. We played him, chat. We got him. Aha! Zero damage. That felt good. Land here is great, and Rabble Master. I feel good. We are in a good spot. Good spot. Woo! We avoided. 246 damage there? That was half of our life total. Gotcha. Please don't have anything that kills us. Please don't have anything that kills us. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. K Command's a real thing. Whew. Every time they tap three, chat. Every time. It's like, whew, going to die right here. Assassin's Trophy. Wishing you had that abrupt decay. May have missed it, but... I like to see your take on Ojitai. Oh, my take on Ojitai. I see. 
Oh my gosh, we're gonna go super wide here, chat. My take on Ojitai. You mean I gotta think? I can do that. Is there any card you'd like paired with Ojitai, or is Ojitai the... Let's put it this way, it's gotta be the, the, the dragon that is hexproof, right? Uh-oh, this isn't good. That's not good. Let's do some scrying here. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. I don't think I need another bridge here. So he can pump this walking ballista once a turn so far. He might also use it to kill a few of these. I doubt he does, but he could. I need to hit, like, Chandra soon. All right. That should turn off quite a few things from my opponent. Got to make some goblins. He's going to pump Walking Ballista. Not killing Rabble Master. Two, four, six creatures here. So we would need six plus nine, 15 creatures. We currently have two, four, six, seven. We have seven creatures. Yeah, the hexproof one. All right. As a four of, as a, uh oh, he's killing my rabble masters. He's gonna make new guys here too. Do you need it as a four of, a three of, a one of? I kind of feel okay with it as a three of. The hexproof Ojitai. Chandra would be very nice. If I were to attack, what happens here? Block, block, block. Mm, block, block, block. I get in for one, but I kill everything? If he blocks? Sure, let's do that. He's not going to block with walking ballista. He's going to block with this and this and maybe nothing else. I get in for five. That'd be kind of cool. Two to three? Okay. Gas can't block. This is fair. So we get in for three here. I kind of like that. Yeah, it fills the graveyard a little bit more. I'm not... <clears throat> let's put it this way. I'm not really getting in with anything else, so taking them off a, a bolt worth of damage here is kind of nice. If I get, say, running or bosses or, or anything like that, uh, walking Bliss is just going to kill him anyway. All right, a couple Walking Bliss that's ticked up there. Oh. Oh. Let's go again. Let's go again, opponent. This gets rid of Walking Ballista, which is the most important thing to get rid of. That's mm -hmm. two down. Let's go, opponent. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Bloop. All right. We'll take two. We'll go to 11. We're actually two slag storms away, too. <clears throat> so two to three Ojitais. Blue-white, minimum. I'm gonna verify which Ojitai it is. And I know that seems dumb, but I actually kinda of like certain Ojitais. To jam out Simeon Spirit Guide. Is Dragonlord Ojitai, it's this one. So I need two to three of those in my list. Five drop, okay. We will work on a list. Yes. The one that does like some weird scrying. Right? Yeah. Okay. Alright. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Alright. I'll have to make my take on it. By the way, uh, anger into now drawing Rabble Master is kind of nice. Assuming nothing too crazy happens here, I'm probably going to allow attack and hold card. I won't hold it if it's a land, though. And my opponent's down to 16 cards, by the way. There went another Walking Ballista. So they probably have only one more Walking Ballista somewhere in their deck. 
I need to play it at some point. One, two, three. What can I put this on? Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and attack in and see if they block. If they block with the one one, I hold this. Oh, the game ended. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Bridgevine, taking down Bridgevine. He anticipates. He anticipates when he attacks. Slagstorm's really good there too. So they block here and block here. The following turn, we're gonna generate one token, swing with this. This is blocked, one, two, three, and then slag for three. Not that we knew the slag storm was on top. All right, we're doing all right. We're doing okay. We're making progress. Going forward. We're 2-0, -oh, opponent's 1-0. -oh. Let's run the table. Let's run the table. I would love to play first. Ah. Medium hand. I am liking these voids. You can quote that to Ray. I'll put that on top, that's fine. Man, the sword's doing some serious work. Hey, don't judge the blacksmith. He's working hard. You have no idea. <clears throat> Opponent might be blue-white. This will be frustrating. Spell snare. Yeah, opponent, calm down there. Calm down there. Blue-white. We'll attempt to get Kranko out first. I have a pretty good hand against it. We need a land. I actually wouldn't mind Cranko getting path here. Are you trying non-lattice shenanigans? Heck yeah we are. Who needs lattice when you can uh, create the swords of greatness? Give me this land. Give me the land. We have a counter across from us again probably? I'm probably jamming war boss again. Can I attempt Karn? Is Karn going to get destroyed here? Probably. Let's attempt War Boss one more time into the mana my opponent has. I would actually take another path. That would get rid of it for Hazaret. All right. We'll accept our play there. <clears throat> Hazaret could be countered here, but Hazaret's less likely to be path now, excluding some fun shenanigans with <coughs> Snapcaster Path. I might lead with Karn, I might lead with Hazaret. Haven't decided. We'll see what's on top of the deck. I will uh I will lead with Karn now. Karn will shut down Jace. Uh, especially if they give me a land. They put it on top. I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good, chat. Alright, so we um <clears throat> we can shut off Jace for a turn. I could also kill Jace with Hazret this turn. I could do that. Do we want to kill or do we want to establish Karn here? Now keep in mind, Karn does not get Lattice. Karn gets swords. But I could Desperate Ritual abrade my own Hazret and slam in here. And kills Jace. It's pretty good. If they have another path, they have another path. They're down to three cards and they didn't brainstorm. I kind of like this line. It also establishes Hazard. They got to deal with Hazard or take punches to the face. I like this line. Die, Hazard. Oh, my bad, mom dog. That's just a little tickle here. I like this. If they go to Fairy and bounce Hazard, I'm kind of okay with that because then I'll, I'll put Karn down. And I have Karn plus Lattice. Shut off to Fairy. What a great guy. Oh man, I kinda, kinda wanna play Karn here, but I kinda wanna get in for five before things. Isn't Hazard's discard three mana? Why not Hazard discard here? Cause then I can't play Karn, but if I can play Karn and use gemstone, I can go get a sword. And that's the game plan here. And we could get a protection from, from white. Oh. I 
I want to go get a sword. I'm supposed to go get a sword. Why not hazard discard? Mm -hmm. Oh, I could have done that. I don't think two life will matter. You are correct. It's just kind of cool to abrade your own hazard. It shows them who's boss. Anything I do is getting cryptic. Let's do it this way. Let's just attack here. Let's encourage my opponent to do something. No actions, I'm gonna just pass. We'll go get a sword next turn. Cast out. <laughs> Two cards. Let's try the car in here. Dobin's Veto. Down to one card. All right, Rabble Master. Be the one. Be the true, true winner that you are. I was actually kind of hoping that I could do Karn. And then if I drew a land. One, two, three, one, two. Thank you. Appreciate that, opponent. Appreciate that. Down to one. We have really uh, exhausted my opponent's resources here. I feel reasonable about that. Colonnade's going to get in the way, though. Blood Moon stops that if we draw it. One, two, three. Let's Rabble Master first here. Swing in. Snapcaster can snap path or snap Dovin. Or... This, is, this is good. This is really good. I like this line. I like this line. You block that opponent. You got that. Give that little goblin a snuggle. Give that little goblin a snuggle. Blood Moon. All right. No cryptic. No cryptic. We got them. Got them annoying um, Jace or uh, Snapcasters. Let's go ahead and slam a chalice on two to stop that. Dovin's veto. Pretty good, can't be countered. I gotta jam in here, if they have it, they have it. I gotta do the damage. Can't play around here, opponent. Opting, putting card on the bottom draws a random card. Land, unknown card in my opponent's hand. This is a bad card. I gotta attack like this one more turn here. After this, I could play around some stuff, but we're jamming here. Going the full distance. Going for speed. Maybe I should have just a little, like, jar of jam. I say that quite a bit. We're jamming. Just a little jar. A little jar. A little jar of jam. Hey, we almost had Karn. Doing Karn things. <laughs> Alright, let's slam in here. Elspeth Knight Errant, which, is, by the way, is a pretty sweet, awesome Planeswalker. Making those soldier tokens. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Get those sweet, sweet emotes to use all over Twitch. Thank you so much. Here's a howl for you. You are now a slime ball, by the way. <clears throat> Welcome to the slime balls. Yours is bright and shiny, though. Gotta work on that. Chew it up some. Gotta, gotta chew it up. Don't do that. Unless you're a dog. <laughs> See Uncle DB's? Look at his. And if you look at Zale's... My gosh, Zale. Clean that up, Zale. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at this ball here. Look, drool and chew it out. Come on, Zale. Clean that up. All right, Chandra's Storm Breaths are going to come in here. Eidolons are going to come in here. We're going to leave the artifact packages here. We're going to ditch Braids. We're going to ditch Slag Storms here. We're going to consider these bridges out. How am I out? Seven? Uh, I'll, uh, one a braid back? One a braid back. One, one single a braid back. Can't buy a new ball. I give all my money to you. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. 
That reminds me, uh, channel, I think, is the tab. Brian just throwing bits at me. Crazy guy. That crazy guy. Uh, affiliate, onboarding, agreements, loyalty badges. I can't do it. I would have to switch. I have to become partner. I can move the one year down to nine month and add one more loyalty badge. I've thought about doing that to add a different color. I've thought about it. We're going to keep this. Scry that to the bottom. I need a land here real bad. We get a couple looks at it. Got there. All right. I'm going to need another land. Let's bottom this guy. I need another land. What's the thought behind this list? Sorry, I couldn't make the deck tech. Um, what if my Cosynth Lattice is banned? Can we use Karn to tutor swords? He's a blacksmith. There's your deck tech jam town. A red slime ball? A red slime ball. Let's see if we can jam out a rabble master here. I'm gonna do that instead of something else to avoid a counter, but my opponent's uh, wise to that and got the counter down. Sassy Fluffy. I'm sassy. No, I'm not. All right, we're going to jam a Rabble Master here. My opponent's got plenty of basics. Blood Moon's not doing as much. I'd rather encourage them to start using their paths in hand. Path. Opponent. You're supposed to path me. He's going after my, my void. Helping me thin the deck. Karn threatening to get Lattice without playing Lattice is too deep. You've gone too far. My opponent doesn't know that. My opponent does not know this. Do not play that path, opponent. That's rude. I'm going to jam out another Rabble Master here, I think. I could uh, Blood Moon take him off Cryptic. Eh, we got another Blood Moon. Let's do that line first. Path this? Yeah, path that. Path that. Rabble Master wasn't getting through. Mana Leak. My opponent's got all kinds of stuff, but they have three cards. They're uh, running out of resources. Keep that in mind, chap. Fits himself. Fits himself. But yes, we are playing a list strictly to... Uh, all right, how do we play around the cryptic chat? Do I have to play another Blood Moon here? I have to play another Blood Moon to get around this cryptic. Oh, cryptic, why are you there? How do I play around this? All right, we're gonna Blood Moon. Next turn, we're going to Chalice on one and have drawn our land. Like a spicy meatball that we are. Cryptic, counter bounce, counter draw, counter draw. It's a pretty standard mode. We have a pretty powerful hand here. Ooh, going for the Narset here. I think if I were to land a war boss or a Rabble Master, I might actually ping this twice so that they don't hurt us. Celestial Purge is a problem. Celestial Purge is a problem, although apparently all I'm getting is sweet, sweet cards. Let's play Karn. This is so risky. See if they have the counter. Gosh, they got all the counters. All of them. I'm just going to ping Narset one here. One, one life isn't going to matter, I don't think. So we have a purge to deal with. Maybe Chalice is going on two here. We'll see what they pick up. A cast out. That's kind of an expensive card. Cycles. It does get rid of a Rabble Master. Hmm. Bane Slayer. That's a problem card for us. Hmm. Bane Slayer. Too bad we don't have our sword. 
of War and Peace yet. Well, let's war boss here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the chalice on one. Obviously this doesn't stop a celestial purge. I should probably be attacking for both here. This does not have vigilance if he decides that he is gonna attack in, which I doubt he is. Probably just, ooh, attacks. Okay, 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 all right. I see you, opponent. Land? Thank you. War boss. Rabble master. Let's go wide. Oh, we went to combat. Thank you, opponent. Make some goblins. Swing for the high heavens. What's going on here? They're just going to... Oh. I think we're dead, chat. I think we're dead. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're gonna take nine. Cast out, cast out, cast out the rabble master. Takes the chalice instead. Okay. Holds the team back. I'm attempting to go to combat fast. I'm gonna attack with everything here. I think that's obvious. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Rabble Master doesn't kill Lyra. I think we've lost. They're gaining uh, too much life here. Is it time to give it up? Lyra's a problem. We gotta beat them before Lyra comes down. Turns five six. All right, we can do this. By the way, we were hitting all of our threats. We're hitting a lot of the threats. We can do this. All right, I believe. I believe in our magical selves. Fast blood moon or pressure like crazy. All right. We got an idea here. What if I just put the sword in? I have to go fetch it, right? Nah, let's do this. We'll go fetch another sword if we want to. We'll use Karn kind of to go get Bridge as like a uh-oh plan. I like that. And we can get liquid metal coating as well. No Lattice, who needs Lattice? Lattice is clearly a bad card. <clears throat> Don't don't say that at your FNM. People will think you're crazy. This guy though, this guy's allowed to be crazy. Who knows him anyway? Oh my gosh, Moto, calm, <laughs> calm down. All right, we have a turn two Blood Moon. I'm gonna keep it. They've had spell snare a couple times in a row here. Uh, we're gonna challenge it and see if they uh, they look for the spell snare or if they look for the paths. We could also challenge it a little bit with uh, just slamming Rabble Masters and stuff too. But it's probably gonna be this Blood Moon first. We will see, I'm expecting Flooded Strand. There's the island. All right, part of me just wants to slam Rabble Master. Mm, do they have the white mana? They let that resolve. Do they have the basic planes? Do they have something that's going to counter this like a spell pierce? Are they just planning to path our rabble master or war boss here? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take them off white if they don't have the planes. We're gonna go that route. Double blue here. So we're gonna have to deal through like mana leaks and stuff. That's fine. All right, let's test the waters. Look what we drew. Oh my gosh, it's happening. 
We're so close. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! That's not fair. Roll, chat. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll out of here. <laughs> Hope for burn coasting. Pog champ. No, that's totally fair. <sighs> Took him off white. Slam the rabble master effects. We are about to sort of war in peace. Wasn't gonna even matter if they had the planes. Ah, that felt so good too. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. What are we doing? <clears throat> what are we doing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, let's see who our next opponent is. <laughs> oh, so disappointing. We bring the sword in because we're like, no, we're not going to tutor for it. We're going to bring the good one in. And we drew it. And we had an aggressive board. Oh. Feels bad. All right, where's our next opponent? If you're just joining us, thank you so much for taking your Wednesday spend it with our crazy selves playing some blacksmith karn tutoring up the swords of the pieces i'll keep this hand it's all right uh, needs a little bit of love maybe we can sculpt our hand just a touch here snow covered island that's a problem looking at maybe storm across from us could be Let's sculpt the hand I'll take like a ritual effect, I suppose. I won't take a land. That's a lot of lands. Ah, off the snow covered islands. What are you doing over there, opponent? What are you doing? Shivan Reef. It's definitely a storm. Let's put this on top of our library. Mainly because I have to probably get this Karn out. We might just be dead here though. But if I get another turn, I at least get Karn. What I'm doing with Karn. It's a shame I don't have like a Tormod script. I can go grab that, but that's not happening. We might be dead here on turn three. Second Electromancer. Mm, okay. They're down to two cards here. What could I get in the sideboard here that I want? I mean, I don't really want bridge. I really need Tormod's Crypt. Um... I mean, I hate getting bridge because it's gonna take a while. Let's go get a sword. Let's let's just do it. I'm gonna go get the sword of fire and ice. Just kidding. Just kidding. Who's gonna do that? Who's gonna let us go get a sword? That was just hilarious to think we were gonna do that. What a funny guy. This guy's real funny. Desperate Ritual into... Oh, ho, ho. my life. My life. Why? Am I running Trinisphere? No, we're running swords. Uh, 
this is miserable. I guess I've been the metamorphosed and past in flames with the idea that yes, they get to do all this a whole bunch here, but they only get to use it once because any other way I was they were gonna get to use it twice. I think we're dead though. Trinisphere spiked a lot in price, I believe it. What are we at? We're at a figurative 14. They just have these to go here. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We're, 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 we're very dead, Chad. They have double blue here. We're very dead. Grape shot, remain grape shot. Who do you think is better, Caleb or Pico de Gallo? Tortilla chips? <laughs> All right, Angers, Eidolons are going to come in here. Obviously, we have no Graveyard Hate. I'm going to probably bring the Chandras in over, over some Karns here. Uh, we definitely want Sword of Fire and Ice. That seems pretty good here. Mm -hmm. I will keep one bridge in as a check against my opponent. Nah, yeah, let's not do that. That's silly. Uh, Blood Moons aren't as good here. Let's do this list. This seems good. Yes. You call him Pika de Gallo? It's easier? What? Oh. Pika de Gallo. <laughs> gotcha. Um, probably Caleb. I'd like to play first. <laughs> There's our one of. For the graveyard hate. If I had another land, I'd keep this. We're gonna mulligan, though. Ugh. If I hit running lands, we have a, a chance at this. I have to hit running lands, though. Eh, we'll keep it. Well, I'll put it on top. Running lands would be a little bit better than that. A little bit better. We'll have a turn two. Um, probably gonna Rabble Master. It's a little more damage. And just hope. Good, they don't have a bolt. They do not have a bolt. That's always good. There's a little bit more risk with bottoming the ritual because we have to draw a land. Now we're a uh, turn out though. So we'll see if it matters. It probably uh, does greatly here. We obviously could have gone a little further and looked for Eidolon. I guess land into Eidolon wouldn't be bad. Looks like they're gonna uh, grape shot us here. I think this is the correct play from my opponent. We need a land here. We don't hit the land. That slows the clock down a lot. We're two turns out from doing anything here. Which is a shame, because we have a good run going in our league. And we have an okay matchup here. Piece of the puzzle hits a lot of options. I'm just greedy to keep the one lander. Getting hard punished for it now. <clears throat> We might just see a bunch of empties here, or uh, tokens from the empty of the Warrens. I could see that. We're on one land. They get enough of these, then it's just easy sailing for them. Based on how my opponents played, though, if we would have had the lands, I think we could have overrun them. Hey, all right, I have a shot at this. <laughs> Bottom that guy. Need another land. Give me the land. Again, this is very unlikely, but running out a horde of goblins here, it's not going to do it, probably, but it gives us a shot. Yeah, we definitely would have run over them at this point. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I think we're dead now. They're going to have a lot of goblins, I think. 
If they have the gifts, we lose, and I probably can concede. I guess I could top deck a land here, and then right behind it an anger. And that would be the way we come back from this. Just kidding. It's not gonna happen now. They wiped away. I don't think I have an out. I do not think I have an out at this point. This is 12 tokens here. And we did draw the land. I guess I could draw an anger off the top and block here. That is our out, as long as they don't wipe away again. So we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have exactly four outs in the deck, it looks like, assuming they have no remand. Four shots at it. Oh, just kidding. They have past in flames. All right, well, good chat. <laughs> they have past in flames. There's a grape shot in the yard, not to mention a bunch of rituals. Moto is really struggling here. Man, we had all the goblins. We had all the goblins. All right, we're going to go for that 4 1. Would have been probably hilarious if we would have gotten the 5 0. Yeah, this deck doesn't deserve a 5 0. That's what we get for beating blue white. <laughs> Maybe. By the way, I just realized there's a light off over here. Let's fix that. Let's fix that. That's silly light. What are you doing over there? There you go. Oh, that light's important too. Let's not forget about that one. All right, going for that 5-0 here. What are we doing on time? One hour in. We might be able to squeeze one more. We might just slam it right back into a, a league. No modifications. Go for it. Go for it again. Uh, let's keep this mess. <clears throat> Get a scry out of it. I have the chalice on one. Removal. Bridges are maybe weak here. Maybe we find our land. Odyssey. We can start calling you Odyssey instead of Odysseus. Ah, it's all right, Odyssey. Please don't. <laughs> don't do it to me. It's all right, Odie. I call you Odie from time to time. How's that? Bridges are looking spicy now. Champion. I'm going to just leave this a braid open, probably. And just pass turn. Our whole sword plan doesn't really work against this opponent, unfortunately. Bridge looks nice if we can draw some lands. Keep in mind, my opponent just punishes me if I don't find the lands. I think if they were to, say, play Noble Hierarch here and that was it, they miss a land, I kill the Noble Hierarch. Yes, this is extra damage. But then it grows too big for bridge. Deputy of Detention, by the way, is the worst card for us to run into. Karn will be going and getting Torpor Orb. Any new spoilers caught your eye? Spore Frog. I like Spore Frog. He's actually a favorite of mine. When we name Frog with Cavern, that is literally the card I've been thinking of. I love Spore Frog. He doesn't do much, but he's cool looking. Oh, you mean actually good cards? Um, there's some interesting stuff out there. Karn wish for Mimic Vat plays Spore Frog? Ooh. Okay, opponent. Okay, okay. Meddling Mage. Meddling Mage. So, full, cool fact here. I should probably be able to allow this to resolve. But every time I have, <clears throat> every single time I have in a league, my opponent has named exactly what I have in hand. 
He will name a braid or bridge. Here we go. Probably a braid, because it's the only thing that kills it. We good, chat. We good. We good. We good. We're going to kill Medley Mage. I don't want it to be copied. I don't want it to be copied here, chat. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Go ahead and get one bridge out here. Uh, this doesn't matter right now, so pass turn. You think the green force will hurt this deck much? I don't think any of the forces are going to hurt any decks at all. Because all the decks that we're playing right now will probably change. So to say... Crap, Thalia. To say that a deck will be hurt... I think is just, hang it, um, this is kind of bad, Thalia is a problem card for us. To say that a card will change a deck, I think everyone wants to be stuck in the decks they're playing, and I think Modern Horizons is going to change some stuff. Yeah, Green Force was spoiled yesterday. Mantis Rider. Alright, so we're getting slightly punished for not killing this immediately. But I just need a land and we'll be fine, right? Oh, please, land. <laughs> I hate you, Thalia. Alright. We've run into this problem a lot with humans lately. They're playing Thalia's a lot more. And I think the thing that's happening is they're playing Thalia's main deck a lot more than they used to in the past. Angers and Chandra are coming in here. Torp Orb's coming in here. Bridge is coming in here. Karn, sorry, you gotta go. Uh, Hazard has to go, and a Rabble Master has to go. I don't feel very good about our chances here, but we'll give it a shot. Force of Vigor, yes. Discard, destroy like two artifacts or something like that, right? Pew pew. I think it's something like that. I would love to play first. This. This is a spicy meatball. Alright. So we're going to start with a Chalice on one, followed by Torpor. Very good. Bottom that junk card. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. Now we just need bridge. Pretty good. See Cone Crossed. That is not the card I want, but I'll take a Torp Orb. I guess when they play Thalia here, we can at least play the War Boss. That's kind of nice. Kind of nice. I need one more land. The Cavern. Naming human. Naming the humans. Thalia. Are you still high on that green devotion prison deck that you played the other night? I think you 5 0 with it. I did 5 0 with it. Um, what do you mean by high? I always have played green devotion. I just don't play it very often because all of you guys like red prison. It is actually probably my most suggested deck. Most suggested deck when playing something different. I like my green devotion. I love, I love it. Everyone doesn't like my version of green devotion and it's after a lady that was streaming and I can't find her anymore. I don't think she streams anymore. But if you remember a green devotion streamer from probably 2016, 2017, um, that would be her. And uh, yeah, that's where I got the initial list. I'm all big on the Summoner's Pact. Most people think that's dumb. People do think I should be plowing under or doing something more land destruction based. You have to keep in mind I am a combo player. This is an interesting attack for my opponent. It's interesting because... Chalice. Chalice on one and two isn't doing a whole lot right now. Maybe I just put a bonus one on one, call it a day. I love that green deck. Yeah, I've, 
Whatever the last two cards that I needed should be able to fail miserably with it at FNM. We'll put another one here on one. I kind of keep the two spot open for a braid. We need an abraid or something to kill this meddling mage. The green devotion list has a variety of lines that require quite a bit of math, and that's what appeals the most to me on that list. So keep that in mind. Phantasmal Image, Copy, Mentally Mage, Naming, probably a Braid, Anger, Slagstorm, or Chandra at this point. Those are the most dangerous cards. They could also name Blood Moon. It's an Anger. All right. All right, opponent. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. We do need to keep the hand relatively empty here. I'm going to continue to go in here. They seem to leave one meddling mage back every time. I am technically, I think, um, eight. I don't know if I'm winning this race. Mantis Rider will change that math a lot here. It may be time to hold back here, because we're just about to take a ton of damage. We're at five. That's a problem. Oh my gosh, and I drew a Rabble Master. Land. If I put him to eight. If I did this, he blocks here, I put him to eight. Then I'm having to block a lot. I think I just have to do this. I have to play Rabble Master and then have to block accordingly. I'm good at math. One plus one plus one equals seven. That's actually sort of how that deck works sometimes. I'm not going to lie. All right, we're going to just hope there's not a second Mantis Rider or a <clears throat> Phantasmal Image flying in here. If it is, we lose to humans and take the lead down 3-2. If there's none of that, then we have a chance here. Torborb's still very good against this. Um, my opponent did not have Champion. Noble Hierarch is countered. My opponent did not use their Cavern Souls. Good for us. Countered. But you get to add up green pips. It's a little bit easier to play online, but once you get the hang of it, you know exactly how many pips you need to do things with uh, Nykthos. All right, let's see if they decide to attack here with everything. They only attack with Mantis Rider, which is a shame because now we're going to send everything in. But I guess that was required, so... Thalia's Lieutenant here. Not a card. I'm attacking with everything because I'm forced to do this. Thank you, Rabble Master. If my opponent blocks correctly here, they win. If they block in such a way that they decide to put Mantis Rider in front of Rabble Master, then uh, so be it. They can just stall you in front of Rabble Master. Mantis right in front of a Legion War Boss, and then just like Thalia's Lieutenant in front of a token. One mentally mage that they care about, which would be the bridge one at this. Well, they kind of care about both, so I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. They take five here. You got it, opponent. You figured it out. And we have no plays. My opponent attacks t uh, three in the air, and we lose. Got it, chat? Got it. All right. We're conceding here so we can get another full league in. I think we get off at 1030, and I got to stay to that tonight. Changes? Probably not. Hold on. Karn Sword. Um, I could use a Tormod's Crypt. I really could. How much did any of this do? Not a lot. That's all right. That's part of the game. I said I'd run it without any changes. Let's run it without any changes. We're going to stick with our sword plan because we have Eidolons. Sword's out. Nope. Nope. We're going for it. Who needs three extra sideboard cards? That's just ridiculous. And who needs to put Chandra in the main? That's just silly. Guys, guys, we're playing with swords. That's what we're doing here. I'm kind of afraid if this is going to be that human player. Play against that human player again. That might be that baby. 
Defense grid for blue white. No, we just uh, we overrun white, blue white. You either lose because they have all the answers and counters, or you win because you overrun them. I haven't found a way that's like a middle ground where hey, we can be a little bit defensive. You just have to be all in, and if you're not all in against them, I think you lose. That is my two cents. We're gonna keep this. It's completely garbage, but that's all right. What do you think about Blast Zone and Red Prison? Blast Zone has been mediocre at best. <clears throat> it takes too much to put into it. You have to top deck lands if you're hiding behind a bridge. You can't put it on usually three, and there's some pretty good spicy stuff from opponents on three. The other one you'd want it on is zero, and you can't get it to zero unless you get your, your Blood Moon. Play the land, then get rid of your Blood Moon. We're doing this because I could put a Chalice on two, which actually looks kind of spicy now. But I probably want to put this on one. All right, we'll put it on one. Stop the Serum Visions op path. All that good stuff. Let's see. We can assume that our defense grid is like one of the swords, and see if there's ever a point where I would want defense grid here. We'd have to draw Karn game one, and then game two and game three, I guess we're bringing it in because we're probably not getting to Karn. Did I try core? Core what? There's a lot of cores. I am not familiar with the deck or the card you are mentioning. Use exclamation point card and card name. You're late to the party, buddy. We'll try it. Got my pen and paper ready to study this match. Uh, game one's gonna be awkward. Although this uh, resolving is nice. The fact that it resolved is a little bit scary. Maybe they have main deck celestial purge, which would be kind of nutty. Look at that. Our Chalice on one's doing work. You have to remember that in game one, Chalice on one might actually go the distance. D Sphere. Just kidding. Just kidding. Narset. All right. I can tag this with one goblin here. Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Uh. I'm kind of afraid to put this gemstone caverns out. I don't need to. I don't need to necessarily. I'm kind of tempted to just jam this bridge and pass the turn. We're not putting the gemstone out because I don't want them to feel the ruin. I need them to play Jace this turn. <clears throat> we can kill Jace. Oh my gosh, it's Supreme Verdict. Well, that's rude. All right. We might be locked under Jace now. Uh, do you have a command for your thoughts on any new cards working in your deck? Do I have a command? I don't think I understand your question. I'm still learning how to tap mana. We got this. <laughs> Both Koth of the Hammer. Koth of the Hammer. Um... Cop of the Hammer got some interesting looks last night when I played it in funny ways. Let's go ahead and tag this Jace for one here. It's kind of a small play here. Hmm. <clears throat> New land. I don't know which new land you're talking about because there's a lot of new lands. The Pyromancer is good in like Mardu Pyromancer list, not in our list. And Goblin Engineer, I think, has some potential. You have to build correctly around it, though. Maybe not in our list. Bonus Narset here. Like, you can do exclamation card, and then you can put Spore Frog, for example, and then that would, like, explain the card to me. See? Like that. So you do it like that. 
These field of runes, by the way, are basically turned off here, so we're, we're jamming. Ooh, Teferi. Teferi bounce chalice. Pounce from Apple Master. You jerk. Thinking chat. Thinking chat. One moment. Processing. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, six, seven. I need to kill these, don't I? Then I have a hazard left over. I do know the Goblin Engineer one. I've been running two Koth, two Shundra, and three Karn. Koth and Karn are cool because Koth can ramp you for the combo. Yeah, we're not playing the combo right now. Lattice is not in here. What is Goblin Engineer 2? It does something where it finds an artifact, throws it to your graveyard, I believe. Happy Madison, thank you for the follow. All right, let's uh, splice. So every now and then you get to do this, which you get to splice and make lots of mana. So let's see here, how much do I need to make? I need four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four, four, five, six, seven. If I can make 10 here, but I'm not gonna make 10. So I just gotta make eight. That puts that out and I'll put a rabble master out. Oh, I can't attack because of my bridge. I'm a silly person. That's all right. I'll we'll attack Jace twice here. We'll hold this land. We'll attack with Rabble Master and stuff next turn, and then we'll. Don't worry. This bridge is calculated. Don't worry, chat. We got this. If the card doesn't exist currently, it's a brand new card, not a reprint, then it won't be in the card bot. So, Elliot, your list that you're describing there is a lot more free when red, which there's nothing wrong with. It's just more Planeswalker centric. Let's, uh, let's do a nice big swing here, I think. Nope, oh, we're gonna get Snap Castered. They can cast this at instant speed. Oh my gosh. This is broken, chat. This is totally broken. All right, we're just gonna pitch the bridge and pass turn. This card is broken, chat. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember what Goblin Engineer does, but it's, oh my goodness. I can't handle blue-white. I hate this. We'd be doing a lot more if this bridge wasn't there, but then I'd also wouldn't have, well, the bridge would have been in here. How have the swords been? We haven't gotten to use them yet. Man, Halik. Stop it, opponent. This is, this is kind of what I was talking about. By the way, we haven't let them use their field of runes for shuffles and other effects. I feel kind of okay about this. I'm still not gonna let my opponent do that. Black red creature, goblin flash when enters the battlefield, may deal damage. Planeswalker, goblins, before all you think of modern goblin lists. Maybe in an eight whack list. I think we've lost this one. We probably can concede. Go to game two. Is that the one with the pointy hat? You can describe the art sometimes to me. I'll understand it. Let's see here. If we're going to get this whole league in, let's go ahead and concede here. I'm behind uh, six cards here to ferry. Not that the Narset's doing anything. I have two lands. We're gonna draw like four or five cards here, but I, I, I don't think we're getting out of this. It is the one with the hat. I like the hat. Oh, maybe I should have gone one more. I think they would have had a counter though. All right, Chandra Storm Breath in, Eidolons in, Sword of War and Peace. We bring that one in as well. We're gonna drop these bridges. We're gonna drop the abrades. We're gonna drop these slag storms. Karn's still here for the liquid metal and to get maybe just the other swords, but we're gonna bring this sword in. 
there there's an argument let's let's do it this way let's let's actually play the sword of fire and ice so we get protection from blue and use karn to tutor our better sword let's let's try it swords haven't been doing a whole lot more free win i'm only running a play set of rabbles and two war bosses no crankos and my sideboard is the fun ofs for karn two islands and three scab clans i'd run more eidolons than the scab, scab clans just because they're a little bit easier to cast oh this hand this hand is not not winning any awards so I attack on turn three. My opponents had three turns to draw and manipulate their hand to do stuff. Let's mulligan this. Okay, let's not draw anything. Mulligan. All right, I'll keep this bottom here. I have the chalice, I can put that on one. Maybe follow it with a blood moon. This hand's a little slower. It's getting slower and slower and slower. Pointy Hat Goblin's pretty sweet, though. Play it in 8-whack. You'll need to splash black for it. We'll try this. I'm expecting some sort of counter or Celestial Purge here. Hello. How's it going? Okay. Sounds good. Hmm? Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll we'll just jam our gemstone caverns out. Here's a uh, for Darth up there. <laughs> Bottom of her and drawing it. Uh, for Darth here, what's happening is kind of the other thing that happens against Blue White is Blue White has a lot of basics, and so Blood Moon becomes less and less relevant, which is kind of weird. But it's a thing that happens. Just be mindful of it happening. What is this for four? Oh, okay. Logic not. My opponent's a little greedy, assuming I don't have another Simeon Spirit Guide or something. Just a little bit. The new Pain Lands and the new Canopy Lands. They are cards. They are cards. Everyone gets a Horizon Canopy now. You'll see that we're already on turn six. We don't have an established board or threat. My opponent's established to fairy. Probably just, just establishes like Jace behind this as well. And then we can't win. And Narset's pretty good too. So these are all replacing planeswalkers with counter spells. They're gonna untap two here. The one thing that probably hurt us the most here in this matchup is when Teferi was printed. Very untapping and getting around Blood Moon. Usually your opponent had to like commit to playing something for a turn. And by committing, they um, were tapped out and you would get to like play a Karn or a Chandra. Since printing of Teferi, we've always started to have problems with this list. Um, I'm slowly trending towards actually not paying, playing any random lands anymore. It's just not my thing anymore. I have these voids in here, but aside from the voids, I even got rid of the caverns at the moment. My opponent is discarding cards. That should tell you how far my opponent is ahead of us. Uh, we'll try to put this back on one. Storm Breath is a pretty good card against this, although they could just simply <clears throat> mana leak it just like that. We're a turn away from Teferi, also ulting here. I don't have a way to pick off Teferi, and I have a feeling that if they have any counter of any validity here, they just hold here and counter any threat I play. Oh yeah, let's just concede. Let's go to the next match. If we're gonna get some of these matches in, let's uh let's move it along here. Opponent's got a stranglehold on us. Blue White's very difficult. I think you have to have a very explosive hand. Even our first hand would have been, even our first hand would have been probably too slow because we're doing something on turn three. Blue white, if anybody can figure out what would be a really good card against it, I'm all ears, but it's, it's gotta be 
in my opinion, it's got to be quick, but then they just wrath, and so help me out. Will I be trying the Horizon Lands? Sure, I'll, I'll try them. I'll try them. Most common mistake that'll happen with Horizon Lands is people will not have Blood Moon out. They'll play their Horizon Land after a bridge and they will crack it to, hey, get some value. And they'll end up locking themselves out of their bridge from like Lingering Souls or something because they'll draw another land and they'll flood out. That'll be the most common mistake that happens. Just putting it out there because I know someone will do it. So don't do it. You heard it here. Just like the gemstones online, don't don't accidentally exile two of them. All right, round two, blue white. Put the land on top. We're gonna need it. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna hit him with a uh, rabble master and the war boss. Let's see if a faster hand does it. Noting my opponent is already ahead of us. They might let this resolve and path it. That's fine. The idea here is we got to get through some paths if we uh, are doing that. There's some cool text on Legion War Boss. This is the matchups that I had the caverns in for him. But as you can kind of see, and through a lot of my testing, it, it didn't really matter. It didn't really matter. All right, we're gonna jam war boss number two here. Obviously we're trending towards four mana across from us, which would mean Cryptic is online for these. But if they have a snap path or something like that, I don't want them to be pathing Hazard. If they have just a counter spell, I actually kind of want them to be using that on war boss anyway. Hazards are better threat here. Karn is an okay threat. We do not have the lattice lock in this build because we are crazies, but that's okay. Bow wow. Bow wow wow. Um, we have an opportunity to establish something. One, two, three, four, five. I could play Karn here and kind of threaten some weird stuff. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and go get the liquid metal coating, which is actually what I would recommend even if you had the options. We'll probably look to liquid metal coating and hazard it next turn force my opponent to uh, do something. They can't bounce to fairy here, obviously. Something they could do. Uh, they're gonna go after my scavenger grounds. That's okay. Sca Sc Scab Clan Berserker, an early cost, Sorcerer Spyglass, Pithy Nino, but I think that's about it. Three, four, we'll play Hazard. I'll play Liquid Metal in case we get to use it for some reason. They can just bounce stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the hardest thing for me to deal with is because it's a detention sphere. This is like a perfect example of where it gets to do what it needs to, is it's a preemptive detention sphere. They can just tick it up a couple turns and then suddenly it's two detention spheres back to back. Kind of hate playing that into that, but it is a thing, I suppose. Let's go ahead and discard this gemstone cavern. I guess I just hit to fairy here. I don't want it to bounce him again. It's obviously not face, but I don't need him to be bounced again, and then we have to replay, and the opponent has a chance at it. This is kind of good for us. We're uh, doing stuff here. They're probably looking for a path or a snapcaster. Get this dude down. Heck yeah. So Darth, this is how you beat this matchup. You have to just run them out of resources. They're gonna flip this. Yep, Dovin's in, flip. Now they can search for something. Opting, they're gonna search. They're gonna be looking for path, probably. Why didn't you play Liquid Metal and Abrade the Teferi? Uh, because I can do that on this card now. We forget about this interaction. It's just a thing we forget about. 
Just uh, I don't know. It's an interaction we we don't always think about. We could also liquid metal this land that's annoying and just leave our car in here. All right, so we're going to sideboard again against this list. Chandra's and Storm Breath are going to come in. Eidolons are going to come in. Um, we're going to bring the Sword of Fire and Ice. Try that line again and, and take out the same cards. See if we have a different result. Are you planning to get Karn back with a braid? I could. I could do that too. Now, honestly, I wasn't really planning to do any of that based on my opponent's reactions to my cards. Um, I don't need Karn. Karn's kind of a, a little bit of a waste there. I guess I could have Karn and gotten a, a Sword of Fire and Ice or something. Ooh. All right, I'm going to keep this. We have a turn one Blood Moon. That's always a nice thing. That's one of the few reasons I would keep a hand like this. It's a little bit dangerous here. We'll go with dangerous, though. Don't have a spell pierce, please. Thank you. This will hopefully take them off white. White is the most dangerous color of the two. Double blue is a little bit annoying. All right, gonna need a land. Well, now they can just cryptic this. It's a little bit awkward. Again, here's a, a perfect example of where Blood Moon is good but irrelevant in some cases against blue white um what do they have they could have had a numerous other things they could have had colonnades field of ruins flooded strands but no our opponent jamming the, the straight three islands here oh my gosh if red elemental blast is released oh my gosh by the way what is this junk I'm going to get rid of Chandra because we're just not casting Chandra in this game. Crap. Now they can counter it. They got to bounce this? Oh, they're... Oh, jeez. Oh, they're literally going to take me off my lands. This is a smart play. I like this. They have us under a real hard lock here, I think. You're cool, opponent. Oh, blue-white. We are up a game. And they have the white now. <laughs> what did they do with that, Jace? Oh, they put it on top. Put a card on top of my library. Oh, I don't want to show them this, this sword. I don't want to show them the sword. Can I uh, concede this one and go to match uh, or game three? Is that uh, acceptable? I'm at one land on turn eight. <laughs> yep. Let's see if we draw a land here. Let's see. Let's see. We could draw a land. Get out of this. I drew a land. We're conceding anyway. <laughs> I don't think I can threaten to ferry fast enough. We're trying to get the full league in. We are, we are eight turns behind. Uh, when we were going to get our next land. So mm -hmm. 8, turn 8, 9, 10. Mm -hmm. On turn 11, we were going to get to play something else. Turn 11. Moto, you need to shuffle a little bit better. A little more randomized, please. Please! The only card they saw was Pyretic Ritual. And Blood Moon. That's all they saw. That is all they saw. All right, we're gonna keep this. This does some cool stuff. This does some cool stuff. We're gonna keep 
keep the spicy meatball. All right, let's go scrying here. We'll put that on. Hmm. I'll put it on top because I'm going to be going a little bit all in here. Here we go. Land. Boom, boom. Exile, exile, Chandra, uptick, Eidolon. Don't spell pierce me. Please. Please. Just opt. It's a great chance to opt. Do it, frog. Oh, okay. Scariest thing. One blue mana tapped. And we'll jam out an Eidolon. Let's go, opponent. Now, if they have the purge, what do they hit? That's a, that's a good question. Oust. Oust. It's not this card, so we can go ahead and go ahead and go, ahead and go up here. I happen to have one right on top, too. Uh, Rabble Master, pass turn. Here you go, Darth. Threat, 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 threat. I'm empty-handed. I have two creatures on board. Chandra on six. War boss to come. Opponent has to decide between Celestial Purging, Rabble Master, or Chandra here. You have to have a quick, aggressive hand. This is why if you play blue-white that has Terminus, it's awful because they can just Terminus it off the top before they get to four mana. And that's a big deal. There's the fairy. This is why this this guy's a jerk. This guy's a jerk. He bounces. He bounces Rabble Master here. Let's go up here for a damages. Let's replay Rabble Master here. I'm gonna tag to fairy for one and them for one. If they can't deal with Chandra, we're in good shape. And if they can't quite deal with everything we have on the battlefield as well, we're in good shape. There is an argument to have gone up with Chandra, not for damage, but for playing a second war boss. Or Rabble Master war boss, both of these. So that you have all the damages. Opponent going to our turn, we are going to emblem instantly. It'll be the first action I take. Looks like they're going to bounce Chandra here and tap team. We'll be replaying Chandra here. Turn and tap all creatures. So let's go ahead and ritual. Play Chandra again and go up for damage. I do this. We get in for one as well because of our token. We have lethal down here. We have close to lethal after a couple activations. They'll need a couple running cryptics here to not die. If they do have, say, Supreme Verdict, which I believe, if I recall, requires double white, then they might have to do something else. Blast Zone to Fairy. So see, what, what's Teferi doing? Teferi ticking up means I think they die here. I could be wrong, though. Path one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't quite kill them. They do path. So now I play or boss here. I make sure Teferi can't put this on top, probably. So let's go damage first. Play War Boss. I have to hit Teferi with enough here, I think. Teferi is four, three, two. Teferi, Teferi, Teferi. Puts him at two here. Yeah, that's where I think I have to be. I could put my opponent to where Chandra is lethal, but they bounce Chandra and then they Supreme Verdict or something, and we're in problems. Chandra is very good in this deck, I would agree wholeheartedly. 
She does uh, work, especially if you get her out early. Here's a here's a case where even in the control matchup, Blast Zone is awkward for them. They're needing to tap or play spells and not getting to put Blast Zone on three, which is where they need it. They need a second white source, so that's true. Here's this to Fairy. Bounces War Boss. What are we doing over there, opponent? You're taking two here from to from uh, Chandra because you upticked this. Untapping two, white and blue. What, snap, path, take two, one, two, three, four, five, three. So we had them, even if it's, they had snap path. They need a lot. So there you go, blue, white, forcing them to need a lot, but needing a lot immediately and not letting them sculpt the hand. If they get to Opt, if they get to Serum Visions, if they get to Jace and they're getting one or two turns with those, that one or two turns is so much incremental incremental value and advantage that we as an all-in deck, um, we're an all-in deck when it comes to aggro and we're a very long game if it comes to more of a prison element. We don't want to go to turn 10 against blue-white. We'll, we'll more than likely just lose. Unless our opponent has exhausted all of their cards, they have one or two cards in hand, they're top decking, and we've got them at like four life or something. Then we have a chance. They can get away from it quickly, though. That they can. That was a clinic. That was a good back-to-back. -back. I actually like that, and I would tell you, watch the last two matches, and you'll see where the game gets way far away from us and what cards don't do and you'll see that in the in the second match we actually go hard with creatures and we don't actually have blood moon they're allowed to play whatever they want we just run them out of resources i'm starting to think blood moon is almost worth shaving one if you have enough of an aggro package brian thank you for those bits i would not call myself a master but i'll take the compliments uh, it's very hard to give up a turn one uh, Rabble Master effect, so let's do it. It is a good, good, and it, and it's back to back. It's perfect because it shows where we're a little greedy, but we go greedy with Blood Moon, and it didn't matter. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it really does, but in that matchup, it didn't matter. They got ahead of us both times. They had plenty of Planeswalkers, Detention Spheres, all that good stuff. And then when we go more aggro, we have a chance. I would call the black, uh, blue white matchup an unfavorable matchup, for sure. Anybody that tells you that we're better than them and we win all the time or is it favorable is probably lying to you right now. If they were Jeskai, I'd tell you it's favorable because Blood Moon has a bigger impact. If they're Grixis, I'd also tell you that. Blue white, no. Blue white's just rough. Blue white's probably the most swingy matchup because if they have Colonnade, Field of Ruin, Flooded Strand, and a few other things, then Blood Moon wrecks them. We have a fast clock and we finish them. Blood Moon, and then they have Island, Island, Island. Doesn't matter. All right, Burn maybe from my opponent. Bolt's War Boss. Appears to be Burn. It's a shame. Turn one uh, Goblin is fun, but not very good against Burn. Didn't let them get under you and you won easily? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. By the way, our whole uh, sword plan, and this one's gonna, gonna backfire real bad. It's gonna backfire really bad. I don't think my phone was charging. That's okay. Alright, chop chop opponent. We have two matches left after this one. Let's go!
Let's go, opponent. Zoomies. Let's say Meyer could still indicate, could still indicate red, white, burn. Could be just a choice of fetch land. Just has to be a red fetch. What if Foothills work, Scalding Tarns work? Let's say Myers, Arid Maces, they all work. Can your opponent play slower? Might still have the MTGO training wheels on. Eh, they just making sure they click things correctly. You have to keep in mind that I have several years of MTGO experience. All right, our opponent is Red White Burn. Pretty much confirmed by that fetch. Pretty much confirmed. I'm gonna have to think about this Ojitai list for Brian, by the way. We might be playing that this Friday. Although that doesn't give me a lot of time to think about it. But I don't think I need a lot of time to think about it. I'm more than likely just look at a variety of blue-white lists and then pick one that I think works. I have an idea, but it's probably bad, but I kind of want to try it. So we might be going that route. The only button you need to know is F6. And ironically, it's not F6 on my keyboard anymore. They changed it at one point and it became the number six. But we'll take F6. Searing Blaze for my opponents. Land and Searing Blaze. This is also why this matchup's a little bit harder when you're the aggro package. They bring in Searing Blaze and Searing Blood and those hurt. This is probably the one matchup that I miss having four Chandras. I'll be very honest. Four Chandras in this matchup would be a lot more powerful. Karn is a little slow. Uh, that's not a bad one here. I kind of want to put it on two, but we'll, we'll stick it on one here. I could draw another Chalice, or I could draw Bloodman to shut off some of these uh, two mana spells. It's kind of a shame the way I hung up my uh, pictures. I should probably have put them behind me, but I kind of like looking at them and not sharing them with you guys. I have the um, unstable posters behind my computer. Some of you guys have seen that in the Discord. Some of you guys have seen that. Opponent is F6 through their turn here. And I'm just going to put a chalice on two. That was a really good top deck. Oh, yeah. Don't have smash. I'm going to feel real awkward if they have smash and then they just goblin guide, goblin guide, swift spear. That'd be an interesting main deck to have a smash to smithereens. This is good to see. White and red. Helix or Boros Charm is fine here. Boros Charm it is. We're at 13. Needing a threat now. Needing a threat. Rift Bolts are what kill us here. They might be playing the Skewer package. That would also kill us. We will see. I sense my opponent may not concede anytime soon here. Based on play style. That's fine. Running clock is a completely acceptable use of time. Although I think they're going to be running their clock a little more than ours. Alright, let's go. It is a threat. It is not the best threat, but it is a threat. It might divert a, like a Rift Bolt as well. Not necessarily what I want diverted. I'd like to actually hit them for two every turn. But you gotta take what you got here. <clears throat> Inspiring Vantage comes into play tapped. One mana, two mana. Three mana. Skewer. They are playing the Skewer package, and they went upstairs with it. I would like another threat. Scry for a threat here. 
I probably should play one of these abrades in case I have a hazard coming up. Put that on top. Let's go ahead and get rid of one of these abrades. I don't foresee them needing to be used. In goes, in goes Simeon Spear Guide. I also play this slot on MTGO. I don't know the keys that well. I'm definitely a paper player. Completely fair. You can hover the mouse over here. Most of the indications are here in this box. That's how I would play when you first start. I would also encourage people to right click things instead of left clicking. Left kick, left clicking kind of means you're going to do the action. I'd also put some extra stops in here. You'll see us every now and then adjust this to stop on say an opponent's turn on upkeep or other things. This allows me to F6 through to turns and locations that I care about. Hotkeys are usually down here. They kind of tell you what's going on, but we hide those for aesthetics reasons. We have our burn opponent pretty good here. Should win this one. You can also right click. I see uh, like Stickball Rust do this. Right click and yield to end of turn, next step. Just know how these work before you start doing them. Mainly this yield until next end step. It's just something to keep in mind when playing online. All right, Eidolon's in. We're gonna bring the Chandra's in. I'm going to bring in a Sword of Fire and Ice, just for the jokes. Anger's in, Storm Breath is maybe. Karn's gonna come out here. This is the matchup I'm starting to take Karn out on, because I think it's bad. Storm Breath's not needed. I'm at nine. Typically we don't have Sword and Fire and Ice. Typically we don't have this. Uh, Kranko's slow here a little bit. Can I fit this in here? I can fit this in here. I'm gonna fit it in for you guys. We're on the draw. I'm gonna take a scavenger grounds out. We're gonna we're gonna go beefy here. Much beefy. I find I lose like every game against Burn unless I happen to get both chalices out. Uh let's put it this way. Game one is a bit of a coin flip, because it depends on what you have. If they have save a lot of removal and you don't have the creatures, and you say play Blood Moon before they get the Helix or Boros Charm, then you're in a commanding position. Chalice is obviously extremely important. However, in game two, Chalice on one is actually not as important as perhaps on two. This hand's pretty good. I'm going to keep this. I hate exiling a land here, but I think I'm safe to do that. I think I'm safe to do that. And I say that only because we have the... <clears throat> well, we have a goblin guide across from us, but we have 20 lands instead of 21 here in game two. Because I, uh, I took one out. And goblin guide. Finds an abrade. It's actually not a bad card to see here. We are going to Chalice on one. I do fully expect something like a Shattering Storm or a Braid or a um, Smash. I expect all of these for this, but I, I think putting this on one is the smartest play we can do here. Destructive Revelry could also be a thing that my opponent's playing. And I'm going to go ahead and do this now. We're going to do this now. We're going to open ourselves up to the artifact destruction. That would mean their turn is doing that. If I don't put this and I try to play smart here, or, or cute rather, and abrade this after it attacks, I could be looking at another Goblin Guide and a Swift Spear. So this risk is... I don't want to say it's calculated. It's just lower, lower, lower full damage output. They take, like I said, if they take the turn to kill this, they were gonna kill it later anyway, probably, unless I put it on two. Ingot Chewer. Uh, Ingot Chewer would be a, be a pretty good one. Hmm. So I have a Blood Moon underneath this. 
I actually am tempted to play that instead of the Chandra because it turns off a lot of cards here. It turns off a lot of cards. I'll go ahead and take one more hit from Goblin Guide here to play this. If they have the Destructive Revelry, they have to play it there. If they wanted to play Boris Charm or Helix, they have to do it as well. My opponent could be sitting on things like Searing Blaze or Searing Blood. Hopefully they're not playing Smash here and they're playing something like Destructive. Toon Tingy, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. You guys that smash that follow button, you guys are great. You get that notification, you're growing our channel. Our subs are great, our longtime followers that come back every time and chat. That is what makes Twitch special. The interaction between myself and you guys and chat is just something that's a little bit different than say YouTube where, although I will comment back to you, <clears throat> you're getting a comment, it's not real time. There's something, something pretty cool about that. Can you unfollow and follow repeatedly? You could. You could. Why would you do that to me? All right. Let's go ahead and play Chandra here and then uptick with this braid. You've been watching for a couple weeks, playing all the time. If you don't mind me asking, this would be good, good research perhaps. Are you, are, what, uh, let's see, how do I phrase this question? What's a good way to phrase this question? Why did it take a couple weeks? And why not in the first one, two, or three times? All right, let's learn something here, chat. We can play this Legion War Boss. Note, note a couple things my opponent hasn't done. They haven't played any one drops. Chalice. All right. They haven't played a Helix or a Boros Charm. Cool. No problem. Question is, does my opponent have something like Searing Blood or Searing Blaze? I'm going to guess yes, and I'm actually not going to play these War Bosses for right now. I'm going to make them deal with Chandra here before I make any further actions that will lose me life total or lose damage to Chandra. Searing Blaze, those targets. We might be seeing a Skewer here. Skewer, three damage, Chandra. Rift Bolt, three damage, me. All right, that's fine. I'd like to almost see a land here. Land, uptick, and then next turn, land. So I want running lands here, probably. This will take them to 16. And we're gonna pass again. I'm not gonna uh, subject myself to Searing Blaze or Searing Blood. It's a little bit riskier, because obviously Legion Warboss would be getting in, but doing that will set Chandra way back, and we're sitting with a Chandra at seven. They have to interact with Chandra this turn. Your name showed up in a recommended channel, so it's always on the screen and I forgot to follow. Ooh. Thanks, Twitch. You're making things confusing for our, our followers. All right, obvious first emblem here. <clears throat> no other actions, so you don't lose that emblem. We're gonna replay Chandra here, hitting them. This is gonna take them to 11. I do have obviously War Boss here and I could jam it out here, but I think that threatens Chandra too much. Let's just go up here. I wish I could cast that, but that's all right. That is okay. We'll have a couple looks here to get two spells off. A couple looks to get two spells off. Again, we're avoiding the very obvious Telegraph spell, Searing Blood, Searing Blaze, or a bunch of one drops. It's just what we're doing. It seems counterintuitive to play slow against burn. It's a thing you do. You you can play slow against burn. It is very strange. There we go. We're going to draw land. I would tap three, play this out. I would uptick with Chandra. We'd put them to seven. I would probably pass the turn at this point, and then next turn, draw, uptick, and then I could play War Boss. The reason we tap is in case we got like a three mana spell. I can play the three mana spell and War Boss this turn because I'm representing five plus the draw. All right, let's keep it going. A little bit of burn. Blue, white, blue, white, burn. We're up 2-1. Two, Two matches to go. 
<clears throat> How do you handle against the Neo brand with Red Prison? Neo brand is so inconsistent that I wouldn't worry about it, but having a Blood Moon helps quite a bit. Having something that prevents, say, Gristle Brand from activating as well, like a Spyglass, also would work. Uh, bridge is fine as well if they're not a if they're trying to do the attacking, if they're trying to do the land activation stuff, then maybe have a couple couple lands. Alright, I'm just going to keep this one for science here. We have way too many lands. We're just going to have six here and see how good Chalice is. You do, you do, you do pray about the Linda Mulligan. Ancestral Vision's here, so that's kind of cool for us. We're going to just jam this Chalice on zero and pass turn back to our opponent. We'll see what kind of deck they are. Ancestral Visions kind of says restore balance, but we can't confirm that yet. It's the first card we've seen. Serum Visions from my opponent. I like the Chalice on Zero when I see Ancestral Visions, because there's some really crazy decks that do stuff. Chalice on One would also probably be a reasonable play. Afraid of a Greater Gargadon or something like that, we'll go ahead and jam Bridge here and pass turn. If the London Mulligan does become a thing, which I think it really should and should be considered, I think there is a argument for watching how Neoform plays, because allowing you to select cards that better a combo, I think is a bad idea. Hmm, they had an abrade. Okay. So this is starting to look a lot more like, as we're told, balance electrodominance. Main deck of Braid kind of hints that. Madcap. All right. They revealed quite a few cards. Let's take a peek here and see what we're playing against. So we have Molten Rains, we have Blood Moons that we don't care about, a couple Lightning Bolts, Young Pyros. Um, okay. All right, so there's a Jace over here. Let's go ahead and destroy this artifact while he's tapped out. Not doing a whole lot to our opponent, but our opponent's also not doing a lot to us. Visions comes off here. Did you see the new bannings for Popper? I did. Three blue cards. It mentioned Neoform, Combo, and Karn. Yes, that was in the modern section. I don't think Karn Lattice needs to be looked at, quite honestly. I know it's a pretty powerful combination, but I don't think it needs to be, and I also don't think Neoform needs to be looked at until they consider the London Mulligan rule. Jace. We're stuck behind a Jace now, chat. It's funny because this bridge is sort of necessary, it's sort of not. They put this card on top, so they have a way to deal with Simeon Spirit Guide here. Going up. So in this matchup, I'm probably going to bring the bridges out, even though they have the madcap. I think... And then we'll bring Fire and Ice in, or we'll, we'll leave it in the board for Karn. What's really funny is a lot of people will say Tron is the problem. That's not a good card for us. I could have attacked there. It's probably a slight misplay. It does take 10 mana, and I think a lot of people will immediately go, Hey, Tron can, can do all this nasty stuff to us. Don't let that be a thing. Please. And I think if Tron is trying to do the Lattice combo, I think... They get run over by other strategies that they are better at now than they would if they were to switch. You think the new card is the best Planeswalker ever printed? Stony Science stapled onto a walker that tutors for specific artifacts. I think the key is, I, I don't know if I can claim that it is the best Planeswalker. 
<clears throat> but I do understand its power. What what's probably the the interesting thing here is that it's powerful because it can be slotted into almost any strategy. And this comes down to that it is all colorless. And so that might be skewing your perspective. I don't think it belongs in every deck. I think that it's giving flexibility to colors that maybe did not play with artifacts as much, which is kind of interesting. I do agree that stapling Stony Silence onto it is pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. I think it's also hilarious that you can make things artifacts creatures and do stuff with them, so that's cool. Also, we're kind of really far behind here. This is a, instead of blue-white, this is <laughs> blue-red. This is a good example of being far behind. We have a Jace here uh, that I can't actually touch, so we're going to just concede because he t upticks and then downticks here and we lose. And we're trying to get these in before the end of the night. We're also five subs away from getting an, another emote slot unlocked. That'd be kind of sweet, wouldn't it, Chet? Wouldn't that be kind of sweet? <laughs> All right. I'm actually going to pull Karn out here because we don't have very good cards in our sideboard because we're playing kind of ridiculous. I need to keep this. Bam. Goat314, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Get these sweet, sweet emotes. We are four away. Four away from it unlocking. Then I have to figure out if it unlocks immediately or if it's at the next month. Which we're almost to the end of the month. And then we'll come up with a come up with a emote. Right, chat? Need another emote. Let's ditch this last bridge here. Aggro package, Eidolon, Sword of Fire and Ice, Storm Breath, Angers, Chandra's in. Karns are slow. We're not really wanting to grab our bridges. Uh, we don't really need these other swords, and Blood Moons don't particularly count very well against blue-white. Sorry, not blue-white, blue-red. <clears throat> blue-red. Thank you so much, though, for joining the Wolfpack Goat. Thank you, thank you. It is appreciated and noted. We're going to keep this jam sauce here because we have double Eidolon. Uh, our opponent does have a, several ways to kill Eidolons, but... If they're can tripping instead of killing, then they're going to take a lot of damage. <clears throat> so, hand seems ag aggressive <coughs> enough. Oh. We're doing it. We're so close. They have a braids, by the way. That is a thing my opponent does have. It's gotten. We're not really slow rolling this. I don't want to play this just yet. I can't attach it, and I have a feeling Eidolon is disappearing here. We're going to play another Eidolon behind this. Let them do their cantripping. If we draw a land, then next turn I'm war bossing, and then right behind that I'm sort of fire and ice attach. Could be a thing. We could be getting there. Land, and I war boss. Oh, yes. We'll war boss here and try to get in, and then next turn I'm going to sword and attach. Red blue protection could be really good. I'm kind of hoping that they just jam Jace here, and then we get to suit this up on something. And I don't even know which one I'd prefer it on. Whatever's alive at this point, but Sword of Fire and Ice might be uh, about to do some magical things. Come on, opponent. They want to kill this war boss. Snappy Bolt. Oh, I can't run in with Eidolon here. I was kind of hoping that this would stay around. Alright. Well, I'm not going to run in because we have a Sword of Fire and Ice. That is the plan. Land Jace, Land Jace, Land Jace, Land Jace. I can't believe I'm asking. For land Jace, don't bounce Eidolon. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. Land, Jace, no bounce, Eidolon. There's the land. Jace, Jace, Jace. Come on. You can't do it. You can't. Yes. Tap more. That's okay. Okay. K 
Cantrip twice. Don't kill Eidolon. Don't do it. No! Alright. Well, I have to obviously Slagstorm here. <laughs> We're so close. Alright, we have Rabble Master next. He's our next one. He's ready. He's ready to wield greatness. The sword beckons him. Oh my gosh, it's a crackling drake. This could be bad. Alright, Rabble Master. No bolts. Come on. We have a creature. We're ready. We're ready. And the Sword of Fire and Ice would be the win. Come on. No removal. Uh, play Jace. Can trip. No removal. Tap more. <sighs> it's not happening. It's not happening. One, two, three. One, two. I can't kill this. Wanted to do this. I just wanted to do this. That's going to put us 2 2. We're going to have to win it here in the final match of the night. <laughs> there are some things that if they just take too many turns, it doesn't work. We had an Eidolon Legion, Eidolon, and a Rabble Master. And we can't even suit up the sword. There's this obvious that I could have played it out, but keep in mind they killed my stuff with two of braids, so it just wasn't gonna happen. <sighs> We're so close. 2 2 chat, final match of the night. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on your Wednesday and spending it here with us. If you're enjoying yourself and enjoying Red Prison and some of the wacky things that we do or talk about, or you like the commentary or have learned something, I would appreciate a follow. That is the free and easy way. If you want to be awesome like GOAT314, hit that Twitch Prime sub. If you want to be awesome like Brian, the sponsor, unofficial sponsor of the stream, there's always bits and other ways to support the stream. None of those are ever requested, though, from you guys because you guys are awesome. And just chatting is pretty sweet, too. There's a bunch of Twitch... Uh, Holy yeah, yeah, those, those emotes. Let's put this on top. Maybe I'll need this. This is going to be a really hard lock on my opponent. Chalzen one, let's go. Brian knows about that. Why no Cavern of Souls in this build? I took it out because everyone kept asking me about it. Now that I took it out, you're asking me about it? I took it out because even in the blue-white matchups, it was another target for Field of Ruin. And it just didn't seem to buy us anything. What did Foothills for my opponents? That doesn't give us enough of an indication of what they are. I'm going to go really ballsy here and just put a Chalice on two. Tabaton, 1810. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. There's like a certain jolt to the whole the whole follower and community thing. You get a little bit of a a little bit of a like a high, you're like, Phew, man, people care. And then I realize like people care, but people like to interact. And I like that interaction. And that's pretty sweet. Kind of a cool thing. Alright, we uh Chalston one and two and one. Uh what did Foothills? You think it's Infect? Off of a Wooded Foothills. Not Dredge. People are good. 
Well, if they're dredged, I kind of want these angers. I don't think I'm going to need spot removal, but I could. Let's bring two angers in. Let's take a Karn out and a Kranko out. And let's bring a Chandra in for a... One Blood Moon. Very spotty. We have no idea what my opponent's on. How do I like Hazard main over Chandra? Decent. I have a soft spot for Chandra. We're going to keep this. Goodness gracious. If Chalice on 1, Chalice on 2 are back breaking, this might, this might just punt my opponent out the wall. <clears throat> Hazard's been decent. I think you can decide on your local meta if you prefer Hazard or Chandra. We're trying Hazard because we have the sword package, which isn't doing a lot. I don't think we expected it to. Hazard can close the door faster, but Chandra has some nice utility. If you play Karn with the Lattice, or you Karn even with Liquid Metal, I would probably play Chandra's still. It was Dredge. All right. All right, opponent. Let's go, chat. We're going to put that on top. All right, let's start with the war boss here. Let's go. They should always be in the same deck together. <laughs> All right, so how do you beat Dredge? When you're lacking art or when you're lacking <laughs> graveyard removal like we are right now because we're all in the sword package you have to beat them quickly and if you're not beating them quickly you're probably praying now my opponent did mull quite a bit and they're probably looking for things that are going to get rid of our bridges and stuff like that we are sitting here with an ancient grudge now and i'm probably not going to sh throw the chalice on one at this point the faith is looting that would be a reason to go ahead and throw it on one well, let's see if they get the land. If they don't get a land here, I'll throw it on one. They do get a land. It's awkward. They get the prized amalgam back as well. That's aggressive. Alright. Well. We're going to leave one goblin back. We're going to leave one goblin back to block prized amalgam here. I think... I'm almost just tempted to just jam this Chalice on one. They have the Faithless in the yard. They don't have anything else. Well, they have a Stinkweed Imp, I guess. If they don't have anything else to do on their turn, they might go ahead and fire off their Ancient Grudge at this Chalice. So the Chalice on one is a bait for bridge protection. We're probably playing War Boss, though, behind this. Just mana efficiency. If I did attack with the goblin, they'd be at 11. Let's keep that in mind. The red force. That's a good question. That is a really good Stinkweed Imp, by the way. Stinkweed Imp getting a prized amalgam here. There's a nature's claim. There's another nature's claim. Alright, so I said I was going to block. Let's go ahead and block. Last zone's annoying. And a Stinkweed Imp. And a couple prize Malcolms. Alright, now I really need that Anger. Um, you're kind of seeing what happens when you don't get ahead of your opponent. And we have an Ancient Grudge here that's going to kill this bridge. I'm probably going to just play a War Boss behind this. Play a war boss here. There's another ancient grudge, so now it doesn't really matter. They can they can kill both things. We got a life from the loam here. They attack with everything. The 
when we crack back, we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to be one short. I'm going to be one short. Should have attacked that one time. But if I didn't, I'd be at 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's take the hit here. Maybe they play a fetch land. Maybe they play a fetch land and crack it. I don't know why they would do that, but maybe they do. There's the fetch land. Crack it. Come on. Come on, opponent. Let's play a Chalice on Zero here. The Chalice on Zero is to see if I'm baiting out a, uh, a uh, Ancient Grudge here. I did not. All right, let's Rabble Master. Uh, they just don't want to touch that Wooded Foothills. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. So our missed attack here matters because we'd be at one. You're at one, opponent. Nice deck, thank you. All right, we gotta beat Dredge here. We're up a game, so we're gonna go to game three here. Our uh, one missed attack cost us this game. But it's very hard to say because if they would have dredged any creeping chills or anything, <laughs> then they would have gotten us. Plus they would have had, what, an extra attack that one time as well? No, no. Ooh, Hazard. Okay. So now we know what we're playing against. We can drop the Karns completely. Bring back the Blood Moon in. Bring back a Sword of Fire and Ice as well. Yes. Should probably have this Chandra in here. <clears throat> All right, final match of the day, final game of the day. Let's see if we can come out with a W here. <clears throat> it's going to be a close one. Dredge is difficult. Dredge kind of ignores us, and we have to unfortunately ignore our opponent for the most part and just swing very aggressively. Here we go. So I hate this because I have the Chalice in one. Chalice in one maybe slows our opponent down way far enough. Torpor starts prize, prize Amalgam, yeah, but I have just one. We're gonna keep this, I'm gonna scry, I'm gonna see if I can get this Chalice in one, that matters. We do have a weak deck to dredge though. Oh, you were saying, does it? Yes, it does. It does stop it. Void. I'm going to bottom this land. Seems a little counterintuitive because I'm only at one extra land, but I'm, I'm trying to hedge the bet that I'm going to draw a land here in a couple turns. So no turn one play for my opponent, which is good for us. Look at that. There's a land right below it. All right, so we need to not die to Configate and Creeping Chills at this point, probably. Cathartic is probably what they have in hand, which would be really good for them. They might also move to Discard. They could also have an um, Ancient Grudge. Camp Claim. Claim doesn't get through this. Life from the Loam. All right. They have a Dredge. Card. I guess a Blood Moon wouldn't be bad. If this Dredge doesn't hit anything, we're, we're in good shape. What a, what a top deck. Alright, we're, we're approaching more the lock side of this. 
What's funny is they can dread, uh, they can get the life of the loan, play nothing, and then put it back in here. It's a stinkweed. It's not very good for us. Step six here. Going to clean up step, which is really good for dredge. There's a prized amalgam. At least we drew a slag storm, so if they hit a few creatures here, we can clear the board. Anger is the preferred sweeper. Ooh, fancy mountain. There's an ancient grudge. It's good to see that bend. They probably play two of those. Seeing it bend, it's mm -hmm. off because of Blood Moon. Need to avoid a few more of those. We also could use a threat. This is a bad threat. We'll play our bad threat. It's a bad threat because if I draw, say, a Chandra behind this and they don't get the land, then I could be playing Chandra. They're dredging life from the loam. They do have a land here. They're going to get some cards back. The other thing is we're kind of hiding behind a bridge, so they might not be in any rush. Wow, another slag storm. All right, so we're attacking in for three here or two here, and then I am doing a slag storm to clear the board. We're doing that because I can't quite get all the braids out of my hand. If I could, I'd hold the slag storm for a better day. You're seeing, though, that we're just not generating a lot of value here by going more the lock route against our dredging opponent. And so this is giving our opponent plenty of turns here to draw out. There's three prize amalgams over there. They dredged a Golgari Thug. <clears throat> they can't cast Faithless Looting from the yard. The question is, do they have another land? If they do, we slag storm again, hoping to draw a land. And they do. All the prize amalgam is going to come back. There they come. We hit a land here. This one's interesting because now I can kind of double a braid. That's probably where we're going to be. I'd rather double a braid than anything. Holds my slag storm for a turn here. Go ahead and enter combat. Let's deal three damage to... Uh, just do prize amalgam, prize amalgam. Yeah, that's fine. Blood gas can't attack, that's fine. Nothing can attack. And those get kind of stuck there. Maybe they'll try to find a way to get those back. If I put blood gas in the bin, then whatever I put beside it would, would come back with the next land. War boss is okay, it is a threat. We have something on board now. It's gonna be blocked for a while, but we do have something here. Stinkweed for my opponent. Best thing to see dredged here if they continue to do the dredge route is another ancient grudge. I think they're supposed to be drawing at this point in the game. And they do. They just take the draw. Alright. That's good. Good. Alright. Bonus chalice here. Let's throw it on two. That'll prevent ancient grudge from doing ancient grudge things. It might be enough. I don't think it is. Because <laughs> Creeping Chill and and other stuff is, is cards. At this point, I almost wish I could bounce my Blood Moon somehow to, to activate Scavenger Grounds. That's just this is not happening. I guess that would be bad, though. Blast Zone would eat up both Chalices. I suppose it depends on your point of view. We're looking for a Chandra at this point to try to close this game out. I'll take another Rabble Master effect as well. Because only one Rabble Master effect we're not getting through because of the prized amalgam here.
My opponent dredges again. There's a conflagate, which is a bad card to see here. They're going to probably hit us for eight. Might kill Legion War Boss here. Keeping in mind that to get another big conflagate, it's going to take quite a bit. So they hit. It looks like just us for eight. All right. That's a lot of cards and not seeing a single creeping chill. This has me a little bit worried. Like, really worried. We are exactly four creeping chills from losing. We're not going to lose to another Confligate, though, easily. I have to assume they have four Creeping Chills in the deck, right? That's a good assumption. They're 40 cards in and haven't seen a single one, though. Kind of worrisome. You can see where I have almost no control over this match. I am hoping that they don't have a four of that's typically in all dredge decks. And then I have to hope they don't have, say, like two of, and then just a Confligate here for a lot at the end. They might have to balance by how much they dredge and stuff if they're looking for those those uh, remaining remaining cards. Mm. All right. I guess I attack with both of these. Get in a little bit of damage. I don't want to go face here with my Slag Storm. Because then a, a bigger Confligate hurts us. We do get two damage in here, which is... It's alright. Let's go ahead and clear. Pass turn. That should be an indicator to my opponent that I have a card I like. Opponent is deciding to naturally draw at this point. Um, I guess I'll play bonus Blood Moon here. We have to remain down on one card in hand because we can't have them pick us off for a little bit and then run in a bunch of Blood Ghast here. Our life total strictly matters where it's sitting. Uh, Chalice... One, two, three. I can put it on three. I don't think I want to put it on three. If I were to top deck, say, like a War Boss or something, I, or a Rabble Master, I want to be able to play it here. My opponent's on all the draws at this point. I imagine that if they're on the Conflagate plan, they have to be dredging. But they have to be careful how many inch they dredge because they got to get Conflagate working too. They might also just Conflagate from hand. Which would be worth one right now because they don't have a lot of lands. I don't know. And then it would be eight when it's in the yard. I don't know. There we go. Chandra's here. Alright, let's see if we can close this game out. Uptick. They're at 13. They're at 13. They have 8 cards in hand. Certain blood gas coming back. Maybe not. Uptick for damage again. <laughs> sort of fire and ice. Uh, I'm going to say no because the damage works here. Because if we equipped Rabble Master, Rabble Master would not be able to get in. If we're planning to get in here with Rabble Master. We need the two turns here. Noting my opponent has played a land. There's a Narc Amoeba. That's kind of an annoyance card. It's going to bring some stuff back for my opponent. Why 
One, two, three, four, five, six. We do six with Goblin Rabble Master this turn. If I down tick, we do six. Let's just swing here and see what my opponents decided. We're gonna just block with Narc Amoeba. I think we're I think we're safe to just play the land here. I don't need to anger. So that I have a spell in hand for next turn. And then if I top deck a spell, we're good. This opens me up to very little risk, I think. And if they have a Confrogate, I think they have to tag Chandra here then. I'm I'm confused why my opponent has not had a single creeping chill though. And you can see that 12 points, this is like old dredge we're playing against. That 12 points of life there, as soon as they got us to 12, they just dredge properly. So they dredge their deck, assuming that's all they needed, and they'd have the 12 points. Easy peasy. That's why that card's really powerful. Without that card, you're looking at old dredge here, and we are able to play more of a lock package, and this is actually how we used to play the, the matchup. It's kind of a look back at, at what we used to play here. Got a little lucky with our chalices here. <coughs> Alright, what do we got, opponent? This is our final match. What do you got? You're either tagging Chandra or not. You tag Chandra, we can't even get in with our goblins anymore. But then you're at nine cards remain. I believe in you, opponent. I believe in you. There we go. Our turn, it looks like. If they kill bridge, play land, they win. Yeah, but the only ways they kill bridge and dredge is a two mana and a one mana spell. Oh, we don't hit it. We don't hit it. One, two, three. Oh, I was supposed to attack first. You can call that a punt, chat. That is most definitely a punt. That was most definitely a punt. Because we should be attacking here. This is playing late into the night, chat. So the attack with two gets in at least Goblin, or at least one spell here. And then we have the Anger. We're going to go ahead and just Anger here, but I should be winning this already. So if we lose here on this one, <laughs> it's a punt. We can, we I have a punt counter. Hold me accountable, chat. We got to be a better Magic player than that. At least we cleared the floor. Now my opponent will need something real magical. Oh my gosh, if we lose here. If we lose. Oh, Configate for two. All right. Whew. Whew. That could have cost us. Could have cost us. It looks like they were trying to conflagate for enough to then have conflagate for eight. We got there. I um I lucked out there because I I did not play very tight there. But beating dredge, it's old dredge, and you're seeing why creeping chill is very good for them. Woo! All right, what did we play tonight? We played something a little bit off the wall. We played a Karn Blacksmith, or basically something where Karn is trying to go get Sword of War and Peace, Sword of Fire and Ice, or Sword of Feast and Famine. The list features several creatures because of that game plan, featuring Hazard, mm -mm. uh oh, magic, 
featuring Hazret instead of Chandra, and then also extra war boss. Put the Hazret there. You'll notice we only have four planeswalkers in this build, and then just some general removal here as I fail to sort this out. That is what we played tonight. That is what we're going to wrap up on. Thank you guys for tuning in here on Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. Hopefully everyone's week is going well. Hopefully you can finish out the week strong, get to that weekend, play some magic, Friday night magic. Definitely let us know. We stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Streaming the magics. We started a little bit late today. I usually tweet out if we're starting late. That was due to I'm chatting with the wife. We got our three hours though in. And man, am I tired. It's going to do it. That's going to do it, chap. We're going to glance and see if there's anybody to host. Although it is Wednesday, hosting is a little bit awkward sometimes on these days. But if I see someone that we uh, we watch, we'll uh, send you that way. Let's see here. Magic of the Gathering. Let's see here. Caleb's Doom Cube. That's pretty sweet stuff. Uh, Jamie Topples is playing that arena. She's got a pretty sweet hat on. Um, let's see here. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Mr. Metronome is playing some drafts. Pretty cool. That guy is crazy. I'm going to skip him. Viral Drake looks like he's playing some humans. Uh, some artifacts and wine for that guy. That's pretty sweet. Modern Winter Stream. Not sure what that is about. Let's see here. Let's see here. Vanishing Cube. Magic the Gathering Modern Phoenix Lists. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, what is this? It's a cube. A cube. Vintage. There's a lot of interesting stuff out there. All right, we're going to send you to Jamie Topples. She's actually kind of fun to watch. She's playing Arena, though. If you'll join us in the raid, give a hello. It's always welcome for us to have some have some support for our other magic streamers. Uh, she is one that I watch from time to time. I'm going to rate her something a little bit different. It is Wednesday. It's kind of wacky. Thank you guys once again for joining in. And if she is not what you want to be watching, say hello and then find what you want to watch. But I would appreciate you guys joining the raid. It is always appreciated. Once again, we stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Playing that magic, Modern Red Prison. We'll see you on Friday. Check Twitter for the updates in case we uh, don't go live Friday. Plan is to go live on Friday, though. We'll see you then, chat.